Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be looking at a uh, kind of something new I, I put in the truck recently. It's a uh, sine wave inverter. It's a 1000 watt. I'll put the link down below for that. Um, this will be a little different. We're going to do not really so much a review, more of just an installation overview. Didn't end up uh, filming the actual install. Hit a couple snags. We'll go over that as we go over the system. Sound good? Let's make it happen. All right, woo, it's bright. So we've got the uh, 2016 F-150. That's what we're gonna do the inverter install on, and actually it's already done. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're gonna actually gonna start up here at the battery. So in general, we've got positive, one of the positive terminal there. I wanna make sure we keep that nice and covered. We've got some uh, split loom, which is, you know, just that plastic black stuff you saw, you'll see it everywhere you can put the uh, wire inside of it. And then we've got that wrapped in some tape. This is like a loom tape. I'm not sure what it's actually called, but it's to help it prevent from like, um, like dirt ingress and all kinds of stuff like that. Next up, we have a fuse. So um, this is an 80 amp fuse. You'll think, okay, well, at startup currents and transients and stuff like that, when that inverter starts pulling power, you're gonna pull more than 80 amps. Shouldn't it trip? Well, the thing about fuses, is they also have an associated time curve with them. And then that, that curve kind of um, steepens as you get higher and higher in current. So the 80 amps is actually pretty much the rated fuse for this load, um, which is a thousand watts at 12 volts. So let's keep moving. So we, uh, we got a kind of a loop here, some excess. We're gonna go down the left side of the engine compartment there. I'm not sure if you can see that. We'll go down. We're kind of coming out through the bottom there. We're gonna come under the truck. It's coming out right on the other side of that. You can see it tucked up right in there. Past that wire, runs this way. So we're tucked right up in there. You can kind of see it there. It's gonna run back and then over here, we've got a, that's the, one of the seat bolts. And right behind it, you can actually see where I drilled an original hole uh, and it was not in a good spot. I'll tell you about that in a second. And then, so I had to drill another one to the, to the right of it there. And then we've got some rubber grommets, goes through there. All right, let's go up into the cab. It's actually gonna come out from right under here. So to take the seat out, you're gonna take these aesthetic plates off. There's gonna be two in the front, two in the rear, and underneath that you've got some half inch bolts. You'll go ahead and take those out. The whole seat can actually come out. Be careful though, you've got some wiring harnesses here. You don't wanna pull those out. What I found worked well for me is to uh, kinda of use the seat lever to lean the seat back appropriately. And then I would pivot the seat this way once I had those bolts out and kinda of let the backrest of that lean onto the seat behind it. That kind of kept it at a good angle to where I didn't have to worry about removing the wiring harnesses and I could still access this to drill my holes, well, hole. So you can see we've got some more of that split housing there. You can actually see the positive in there a little bit. I'm not gonna wrap this one because it's inside. I've just got some zip ties at the ends to make sure it stays on there nicely. And then you've got the negative wire here. So that's actually gonna go secured to the bolt that's in here underneath it so that way um, we're using the frame for conducting the negative back to the the battery ground the battery negative uh, so what's interesting right is we have two dissimilar metals we've got a copper positive running the whole way and then we've got kind of a little section of copper of copper negative going from here to the inverter. But then the majority of this section is gonna be the aluminum truck body. So they started making the F-150s with an aluminum body. And I was able to get it down to about the same resistance for the, for the path return, uh, somewhere around 0.5 ohms. Now you're gonna to wanna to be careful because the, the frame of the body is painted underneath this. So you're gonna to need to use a little bit of sandpaper and, sh and rub off some of the paint right around the bolt hole. And, and then I ended up using a washer to kind of sandwich the um, eyelet of the negative between the bolt 
and the car frame. So it made up a pretty good contact. I got it down to about the same resistivity as the copper of, of, the, of the positive path. So that's pretty good. Uh, and then we're gonna run back under the seat there. And you can see the inverse, so we've got the cable. There's this little flap here, which is nice. You can kind of tuck it under there. It's gonna run back, and then that's where we're terminating. So let's go back over to this side. So there's the inverter, and I actually don't have it secured down yet, so I can go and pull it out for you. This is the Go Power inverter, I think. I'll leave a link down in the description um, so you guys can pick one up too. So this is the, uh, we got two, two outlets. There's a power button down here, and some status LEDs, you know, USB. It actually has a remote power on button you could wire to your dash, but I don't really need that in this case. This is just for when we're out in the pastures and we need some auxiliary power. So that's about it, guys. Like I said, be real careful. Make sure you got a good ground connection hooked up from your uh, from your bolts back to here. And as for like the location of that uh, drill that I made, that hole that I made, let me see if I can get you a better view of it. You can see how it's offset from the seat bolt post, and it's about right at two inches. And you'll see kind of the natural the natural place for that once you get this cover off. It's, it really sits pretty much right here at this corner. And you wanna be careful, originally I drilled the hole right around here, thinking that there was kind of a recess in the bottom of this plate that secures the seat rail down to the body. But there actually really isn't as enough of a recess. But if you get over here in this corner, you can see those wires are nice and free. They're not rubbing on anything. We've got the extra uh, protection on there, just in case anyway. And guys, that about wraps it up. Appreciate you taking the time. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give a like and a subscribe. It really helps us out. We'll get some more things like this out there for you. And hopefully in the future here, I'll actually have a full install video of our next projects instead of just reviewing kind of what we already did. Until then, we'll see you guys next time. And there's a horse. Have a good one.